Hi guys, it's Daniel here. All of you probably have heard of something called Fermat's Last Theorem, which states that x to the power of n plus y to the power of n plus z to the power of n equals equals z to the power of n has no positive integral solutions x, y, and z for n is greater than or equal to 3. And for when n is equal to 2, it is the Pythagorean Theorem, which has infinite number of solutions. So we're not going to prove Fermat's last theorem here, but we're going to prove 25% of it. That is, we're going to prove the case when 4 divides n. So when n is equal to 4m, for some positive integer 4, we're going to prove that this thing has no solutions of positive integers. So the first thing we probably want to do is to reduce this to something uh, like something that we can do in a finite amount of time, because right now there's an infinite number of n that we need to check. So Let's first see what we can do about that. Well, x power of 4m, well, that's x power of m to the power of 4. y to the power of 4m is equal to y to the power of m to the power of 4, and z to the power of 4m is equal to z to the power of m to the power of 4. So, in order to prove that this has no positive integral solutions, it suffices to prove that x to the power of 4 plus y to the power of 4 equals z to the power of 4 has no positive integer solutions because if this doesn't have positive integer solutions then of course if we replace x with the x power of m y with y to the power of m and z with z to the power of m then it will have no positive integer solutions as well and in fact we're going to go one layer deeper we are going to prove that x power of 4 plus y to the power of 4 equals z squared has no integer solutions so the first thing we need is a lemma lemma and this lemma is the um, explicit representation of all possible solutions of the Pythagorean um, the Pythagorean theorem. So this is the classification of Pythagorean triplets, and it goes like this: for x squared plus y squared equals z squared, x y z are positive integers. All solutions can be characterized by x is equal to k times m squared minus n squared, y is equal to k times 2mn and z is equal to k times m squared plus n squared, where m and n are relatively prime. So the GCD of m and n equals a 1, and m and n have different parity. So that means that one of them is even and the other is odd. So uh, let's put this lemma here to the side here. We're going to use this lemma to prove that x power 4 plus y to power 4 equals z squared has no positive integer solutions. So first, off the bat, um, what's the first thing you'd think to do here, given that we have this lemma here? Well, um, x power 4 is x squared squared, y to power 4 is y squared squared. So this is in fact already in the format for our lemma. So right off the bat, we can substitute x squared is equal to um, km squared minus n squared, y squared is equal to this k times 2mn, and z uh, is equal to k times m squared plus n squared. However, um, we don't really like to work with k, m, m, and n. That's three variables, and we already had three variables to work with to begin with. And we want to make this as simple to ourselves as possible. So before we substitute um, without thinking ahead, Let's first try to see what we can do to reduce the number of variables that we need to use. Well, let's suppose that x, y, and z are not relatively prime. Because if they aren't relatively prime, then that's where the factor of k comes in. If we can somehow make them relatively prime, then the k factor becomes 1, and we're, we just need to work with two variables. So um, how do we make sure that x squared, y squared, and z are relatively prime? Well, if p divides x, p divides y, and p divides z, then that means p divides x power 4, and in particular, p to power 4 divides x power 4, and also p to power 4 divides y to power 4 as well. That means p to power 4 divides x to power 4 plus y to power 4, which is equal to z to power 4, or z squared. So p divides p to power 4 divides x to power 4, y to power 4, and z to power z squared. So that means that we can divide everything by p to power 4, and then we can get a smaller um, solution for x power 4 plus y power 4 equals z squared. And as long as x, y, z have some common factor, we can take 
that common factor divided out after uh, taking it to the power of 4. And then we can do this eventually um, until x, y, and z are relatively prime. So once we get the x, y, and z are relatively prime, we can apply the lemma without k, i.e. k equals 1, to get that x squared is equal to, um, let's call it a squared minus b squared. Um, y squared is equal to 2ab. And z is equal to a squared plus b squared. So it's important to note that a squared minus b squared and 2ab, these are interchangeable, uh, except for um, we don't really care about which one is assigned a squared minus b squared and which one is assigned 2ab because um, x and y in this equation are symmetrical. So without loss of generality, we can assume that x squared is equal to a squared minus b squared and y squared is equal to 2ab. Uh, anyways, z is equal to a squared by plus b squared, so we can just leave that. But now do we notice something interesting about one of these equations? Well, the most inter interesting equation is probably the first one. Because if we rearrange it, then we get that x squared plus b squared is equal to a squared. And lo and behold, this is exactly the same format for our lemma. So guess what we're going to do now? Apply the lemma again. So we have that x squared, um, x is equal to m squared, k m squared minus n squared, b is equal to k times 2mn, a equals um, k times n squared plus n squared, but not quite. Because now x and b are not symmetric. x is one of our original variables and b is one of our new variables. So we can't just assume without loss of generality that x is equal to m squared minus n squared and b is equal to 2mn. We have to actually prove it. Well. First off, let's check whether we have a factor of k here. By the lemma, we know that a and b are relatively prime. So, well, that already tells us that k equals 1, so we can get rid of it again, thank god, and work with only two variables. Now let's try to figure out um, which one is equal to m squared minus n squared and which one is equal to 2mn. Well, we also have the condition that a and b have different parity by the lemma. So, Let's consider, well, first off, a is definitely going to be equal to m squared plus n squared. Let's call it c and d for here. So a is equal to c squared plus d squared, definitely. So which one of the remaining things can b not be? Well, if b is equal to c squared minus d squared, then that means that uh, b, a and b are going to have the same parity, which is a contradiction. And in fact, since we know that c and d have different parity, that means c squared plus d squared is odd, and so that means, well, the only possible choice for us is b is equal to 2cd, which is even, and which leaves us with x is equal to c squared minus d squared, c squared minus d squared. So now, what do we do? Well, we've already used this first equation here, so well, we still have two more equations to use. Well, we probably won't be using the last equation because this contains a z and nowhere else do we even use a z. So let's try using the second equation. y squared is equal to 2ab. Well, we already have a characterization of a and b here, so might as well uh, use it and plug it in. So we have that y squared is equal to 2 times c squared plus d squared times 2cd which is equal to 4 times cd times c squared plus d squared. c squared plus d squared. Okay, so now what do we do? Well, we do know that c and d are relatively prime by the lemma. And then that implies that c and c squared plus d squared is relatively prime, as well as d with c squared plus d squared. So c, d, c squared, and d squared are all relatively prime. And this 4 right here, we can practically just ignore it, or if you want, we can bring it over to the other side, so y over 2 squared, is equal to c, d, c squared plus d squared. But the point is that c, d, c squared, and d squared are all relatively prime, and they all multiply to a square. Well, this implies that c, d, and c squared plus d squared must be squares themselves. So let's let c equals e squared, d equals f squared, and... Uh, c squared plus d squared equals g squared. So how many variables are we at right now? We have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're at ten variables right now. Great. But thankfully, ten variables is all we need because check out what happens here. We plug in C in for C squared and D in for D squared to get e to the power of 4 plus f to the power of 4 equals g squared. Hmm, wait a second. This looks exactly like x to the power of 4 plus y to the power of 4 equals z squared. So, how can this bring us to a contradiction? Well, if we assumed that x plus y plus z in this equation right here was the smallest possible, and we can always find a smallest possible because x, y, and z are positive integers. So out of all the solutions, we say that x, y, and z have the smallest possible sum. Then, after going through all this process, all of, all of this, we end up with e to the power of 4 plus f to the power of 4 equals z, g squared. And clearly, if you follow along, e, f, and g are all smaller, much smaller than x, y, and z. So this means that this thing has e plus f plus g smaller than x plus y plus z. But we assumed at the very start that x plus y plus z was the smallest possible. So yet we ended up with a sum that was smaller. So that's a contradiction. It's a contradiction which shows that x power 4 plus y power 4 equals z squared has no solutions in positive integers, which shows that x power 4 plus y power 4 equals z to power 4 has no solutions to positive integers, which shows that finally x power of n plus y to power of n equals z to power of n has no solutions in positive integers for n is a multiple of 4. So finally we've proved with 10 variables that, uh, that we've proved 25% of Fermat's last theorem, so what remains is the other 75%. Hi guys, it's Daniel here. Um, to all your seniors out there, good luck with early applications, which are due in three days. Well, today we're going to do Steiner's Porism. 